All right, welcome folks to the Bears Gym. John chapter 18 today. We are getting into the passion of the Christ, the crucifixion, uh, the story in the garden, the ultimate betrayal by Judas. Here we go, John 18. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where was a garden unto which he entered with his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. It's always nice to have a little place to get away and seek the Lord. Listen to him, wait upon him. Uh, for myself, uh, I like to get away where the bears are at in the woods and hike and be in the trees and the, the hills and the brush and just kind of be in the woods and, you know, escape from the city. And Sometimes it's in the bears' gym in the house of discipline here. Sometimes it's on the porch looking at the sky. Sometimes it's walking down the road uh, with my mascot, Boris. Some, it's, there's... Nice to have little places where you can get away and be with the Lord. Sometimes it's driving back and forth to work. I have the privilege of being able to uh, uh, have a two to two and a half hours a day of commuting time, prayer time, you know, think time, talk to the Lord time, listen time, and that's a good thing. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a catch twenty two. It's a Kobayashi Maru kind of thing. Or, uh, yeah, it's a lengthy commute every day back and forth to work, but it's also time for you to, you know, uh, knock on the heavens and listen to the sound of Jesus Christ speaking to your heart. It's a, it's a beautiful thing, you know, but, you know, it requires a little effort and, you know, but God puts those things in our life to teach us, to train us. Anyway, having a little time to pray, to to get away from the, you know, the crowd, sometimes your family, your work, your job, and just get before the Lord. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. Isn't that like the ultimate betrayal? A person that you've given of your life to, Jesus, to the disciples here, three or so years, three or more years, and have the person that Jesus fed, ministered to, cared for, betray him, to turn on him, to be the, the, the trench coat, uh, the traitor, the betrayer. To be called Judas in this day and age is not a good thing. In that day it was a name, but you notice not many kids have the name Judas. Maybe a few, uh, but definitely not Christian families. We don't uh, very often name our children Judas because it's been a name of uh, an abomination, almost so. You don't see too many children with the name Judas. <clears throat> Verse 6. As soon as then, as he had said to them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Just the sheer presence of God himself, allowing men to reveal for a brief moment who he is, but eventually then, then they take him anyway because Jesus allows them to because that's why Christ came to this earth is to be crucified. Then asked he them again, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way, that the saying might be fulfilled which he spake, of them which thou gavest me, I have lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it 
and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. I always wondered if Malchus ever became a follower of Christ after all this happened. I wonder if Malchus realized who he was dealing with. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword, Peter. Into the sheath put your sword. The cup which my father hath given me shall I not drink it. We all have to drink our cups, our cup of the cross of Christ, our discipline, our obedience. We all have to drink our cups. And when you have to drink it, just accept it. Take it like a man, or if you're a woman, take it like a woman of Christ, just take it. Don't complain. Don't have a pity party. Just just drink it. It's it's your cross to bear, the the drink of torments and sufferings in this life that sometimes you have to go through because you've named the name of Christ. And today in this study, Jesus has to drink his cup. The cup of punishment, trials, and eventually death. It's his time to drink. Then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away to Annas. For he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest and went with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. And most of us Bible studiers believe that is John. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? And he saith, I am not. If you remember earlier, Peter was willing to go way out on a limb, saying, I'll never deny you. Well, guess what he just did? He says, I'm not a disciple. Said, but he went out on a limb and said he's one of the great ones. And if you go out on a limb and say that, you're going to be put to the test. And the servants and the officers stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold. And they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself the high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort, and in secret I have said nothing. In other words, he was, he was an open book for them. Why are they now questioning him? Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me. What I have said unto them, behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? And Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas the high priest, and Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. If you stand and warm yourself with the world as a believer in Christ, knowing that you should be a witness, sometimes somebody's going to ask you, are you one of his disciples? And if you are, why are you in here just hanging out with us? Hanging out with us at the bar? Or hanging out with us, you know, in some other seedy type environment? Well, why are you here if you're one of his disciples? They said, therefore, unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? And once again, here we go. Jesus told them, said, you, You'll deny me, Peter. Peter said, Oh, no, I'm, I'm a great man of God. I, I'm not going to deny you. Here's Peter. He denied. He denied. 
And he said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Here comes Peter once again. He has another opportunity to redeem himself. Peter then denied again, and immediately the rooster crowed. Wow. He had three opportunities to redeem himself, and he failed every time. Once again, if you go out on a limb and say, man, I'm not going to stumble. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just carry on in this environment. It's not going to affect me. And, and be willing, you, you're going to be put to the test. And Peter was put to the test, and he failed three times. I guess that's kind of a good thing to know that a man like Peter, such a great man of faith, but he kind of went out on a limb and he failed three times. But you know what? Peter didn't stay down. Peter, and give it to him, he got up. The righteous man falls seven times and he gets up seven times and eventually he stops falling. And that's what happened to Peter. Peter got up after this, you know, when this all came round about. And he became a great man, a great disciple in the body of Christ. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. It was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. They were really worried about keeping their religion, but it didn't bother them too much to crucify the Prince of Peace. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. That saying of Jesus truly would be fulfilled, which he made signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, saying, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it of thee? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests had delivered thee unto me, what hast thou done? Boy, isn't that interesting? The world knows when other believers betray other believers. They know it. They say, well, hey, wait a minute. I thought you were one of them. Well, then they have to chew the flab a little bit and start treading water fast as they kind of back out and say, oh, well, well, you know. They got to chew the flab in a way that a Christian really shouldn't. Pilate noticed that it was the Jews that betrayed up their prophet, their redeemer, the Messiah. The Pharisees instigated the crowd. The crowds ate it right up. Jesus knew what was in men. And there was many, many followers of Jesus during his time on earth. But after the crucifixion and all the pain and the suffering, there was only about 120 people up in that upper room waited upon the Lord to move with his Holy Spirit upon this earth. Very few in number compared to the multitudes and the masses that followed him eating the bread that he miraculously provided for them. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. His kingdom is from above. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a Jew and a king? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king, to this end was I born, and for this cause came I unto the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. 
Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. If you claim the name of Christ, you're going to abide in his word. If you're living as the godless and claiming to be a Sunday Christian, shame on you. Shame on you. It's time to let the rubber of your boots, your faith boots, hit the road and start walking. As if you hear this word and you call upon him and then you live like the world, you've, you've, you've refused him because that's not what he said. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Well, those of you that have heard this story before obviously realize that they chose Barabbas. They chose Barabbas over the Prince of Peace. Why? Why in the world? That'd be like, you know, seeing the President of the United States and a murderer, and then you say, well, let the murderer go free and execute the president. You know, that, that's in this modern age. You know, I'm not claiming that our presidents are righteous. I'm just saying the office, you know, there's got to be some respect for the office of the president. And then you have a murderer and saying, no, we want the murderer to be set free and having the president executed. That's ridiculous. But see, their minds were jaded with hate and evil and envy. And the mob, the mob mentality of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the hypocrites, instigating the crowds against him, though he, he did nothing wrong. What did he do? I mean, in reality, what did he do wrong? He fed multitudes. He raised people from the dead. He healed people. What did he do wrong to deserve death? Nothing. Nothing. All right. Chapter 18 has come to a conclusion. Uh, next time we'll be in John chapter 19, and we, unfortunately, will get uh, deep into the crucifixion uh, next time. But unfortunately, it is part of history. It is part of truth. And knowing what Jesus uh, did for us uh, is an important facet of the Christian faith. So with that, uh, from the Bears Gym, I uh, wish you God bless and have a great evening, great day, great morning, whatever this time means to you from where we're at in the Bears Gym. Um, God be with you. We'll see you.